Welcome to Being at Home with George. And I'm so excited today, and I'm thinking about the situation that happened. So as we like to begin this process with this idea of embracing whatever comes up, saying yes to it, and at the same time, generating the hope. And I'd like, during this time, to start to get down to the basic fundamentals. And I was doing this informal study of when I'm driving, and I, I live in the Boston area, so we're notorious for not being good drivers or not being polite to each other. And I notice I've had this practice is when I'm driving and I'm not in a hurry, I stop and I let the car and somebody that, you know, if they want to get into the main road, I pause and let them come off a side street and get in. And what I've been noticing a lot is that when I do that, the impression or the energy is they're saying, OK, so what took you so long? And sometimes and recently, more recently, I've been getting people who would give me a hand sign, say thanks. And I just give them a nod and whatever. And of course, I've gone through the process of not knowing that I expected them to be grateful for me letting them in. And when they didn't, and they had this attitude like, what took you so long? I took it personally, or I, I realized that, you know, that's an opportunity for my heart to open and it would actually close. And so I really started thinking about how, because there's a lot of hostility out there and people don't seem to want to take time to connect. And so I do my my part in that is to trying to connect, to actually look for opportunities where I can exercise random acts of kindness or just letting somebody in, not just physically in terms of the car, but in terms of my heart and my mind and, and sense of recognizing them, seeing them, I think is really important. And I think about, you know, Phil Jackson talks about it all the time, or he used to talk about it in our conversations, but he talks about it in his books. This idea of an open heart and an open mind. And he's not the only one. I think it's probably a Zen tradition, considering that's his tradition that he comes from. And so acts of kindness and this idea of I have my mind on kindness and kindness on my mind. And so when I'm in the car, that's been a practice. But also when I'm out and about just greeting people and saying hi. And I know Sean Accord in his happiness studies, he talks about at random acts of kindness, but he also talks about these research habits that generate happiness for ourselves and others. And one of them is just having three smiles a day, just smiling. And I was talking to a friend earlier that was, who was really sad, and I talked about the idea that you can't smile and cry at the same time. And one of the teachers I've observed for over the years is Thich Nhat Hanh, and he talks about smiling, you know, breathing and smiling, going slow, that sort of thing. So. I'm really interested in, I have kindness on my mind, my mind on kindness, and how we can use that and bring that into our relationships, helping us connect to ourselves and others. And I'm reminded, I do a lot of stuff around self-image and self-image psychology. And Maxwell Maltz wrote the book, Psychocybernetics. He talks about the four steps to healthy self-image. And we've been talking about in previous broadcasts of this idea of forgiving others, forgiving ourselves. And the third step of that is to see ourselves with kind eyes. So that's a practice we can do not only with others, but with ourselves, to seeing ourselves with kind eyes. I'm not saying not holding ourselves accountable, but we can hold ourselves accountable and be kind, bring that compassion, that empathy into it and seeing others with kind eyes or, and seeing us at our best. And that sort of thing. And in terms of when I interact with people, or when someone is behaving or whatever, if I can just pause and think, just like me, this person wants to be happy, but they're not behaving in a way that's going to be conducive to their happiness. And that if I could just focus on what we have in common. So we all have this desire to be happy. We experience loss. We get old. You know, people die and we get sick and things that we love. Because it changes, things change. And then the things that we love to do, we're not able to do. Now we're getting back to being able to do things like going out to eat and, and meeting people in person. But the question is, how do we use this opportunity and how do we shift the consciousness from hostility, I'm angry and I have the right to be righteously angry and say whatever I want and treat you any way I want and not see you with kind eyes, not see ourselves with kind eyes and not focus on how can we make the connection how can we focus on what we have in common and how can we greet each other in a way where an act of kindness or a smile might be the only connection people have with each other. And they say that 
shortest distance between two people is a smile. And so that's the idea of this idea. I got my mind on kindness and kindness on my mind. And I'm thinking about what the Dalai Lama said when he was asked a question about his religion. And he said, my religion is kindness. So this idea of bringing kindness, having a mind on kindness and kindness on our mind, especially when we think about ourselves, see ourselves, evaluate ourselves, how we feel about ourselves. If we can bring that kindness, see ourselves with kind eyes, see everything with kind eyes. And I'm not saying being polyamorous, but I'm saying in those situations where the tendency is to be negative or to be dismissive or to be angry or frustrated or just to be isolated, to actually try to open the heart, open the mind, let people in by seeing them and seeing, like I like to talk about it as we all have this masterpiece or this divine spark, this Buddha nature, Christ consciousness inside of us. We all have it. And it's something that we're born with. It's not something that we have to earn, but we have to access it. And believe it or not, these acts of kindness, these ideas of how to connect, how to be in a positive mindset, helps us to access that masterpiece within, the power within us by acts of kindness. And I think in the Bible, I remember reading, because I left Sunday school, but it didn't leave me, is how you treat the least of us is how you treat me. So being kind to everybody you know, being more inclusive, being able, even if we don't say anything, we can at least look at them and focus on what's right with them versus what's wrong with them. So whether they look like us or they believe like us, and we see that just like me, that person wants to be happy, but they experience all of those emotions range from frustration, anger, fear, feeling alone, feeling powerless. And that if we can just recognize that maybe the smile we give them, the act of kindness we give them could be the turning point or the opening of the heart and making the connection with ourselves and others. And I believe this, that all that I give is given to me. So if I'm being kind, that's what's going to come back to me. And if I have my mind on kindness, I have kindness on my mind. And it's probably going to lead to kind thoughts, kind words, kind actions kind habits, and I'll be value, and the value will be kindness, connection. And that would be the destiny, the destiny of kindness. And that's a happiness practice. And that happiness is something that we can choose to be just by being kind, seeing ourselves and others with kind eyes and realizing that we all want to be happy, be free from suffering, and live with joy and ease.